Okay, we are back at it, man. We're going to be doing the long-awaited vocal enhancer breakdown. I'm going to be showing you, you know, what each and every knob does, as well as how we can put this into our workflow, our daily workflow, and how we can really get that extra 50% out of our vocals. You didn't think you could get more out of your vocals? Well, you can. So stick around. Let's hop straight into it. As always, check it out. Link in the description for this wonderful piece. Yeah. Alright, so when it comes to the vocal enhancer, man, it is a pretty simple device for those who know a little bit about analog and, uh, you know, how we can really get the most out of it. But for those who don't know, let's break it down. We'll start off with the layout, okay? So, working from left all the way to bottom right, we start off with our tube preamp. Now, our tube preamp is essentially the first stage of the plugin. How much we affect the input level is going to determine how hard we are hitting the plugin, okay? The harder we hit it, the more we're going to get a distorted sound, okay? Now, I personally like to have the vocal enhancer as the first plugin. So, if I was just to press play real quick, just go to the vocal. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah, it's all the same. Oh. Right, you can see that the more I go into it, the more we distort the plugin, the more we distort the rest of the chain. Does that make sense? So this is really going to determine, you know, how gritty you want your vocal to sound. But it gets deeper than that, okay? Let's just say we wanted to control the EQ of that distortion, right? We want to really control the overall tone of the vocal. We can do that by using the bass and end. If you notice, I'm right-clicking. Unfortunately, the patcher plugin um, doesn't have undo so you really have to just press copy to make sure you can get back to the original uh, parameter so keep that in mind but let's just say i wanted a more bassy sounding vocal i could do that if this is especially important if i want a overall more bassy vocal but i don't want to go into my mix and really start adjusting this just makes perfect sense I let you. okay you say that you change but you never change same text on the phone yeah it's all the same oh it's all the gain you do i sound insane you end up just ignoring can you see how it really is minimal but it affects the mix in so many ways right we get a bit of a volume decrease when you go on the air because we don't want something that's too loud and airy right and too trebly right when we go for the bassy we don't really get a bassy vocal we just get more of a kind of beef boy sounding vocal so definitely mess around with the bass air again i personally like to leave it 50 50 but if i do want a brighter mix sometimes i will just go something like this I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the and if I want a bit more of a bassy sound. I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the and it almost de-esses the vocal for me. So I really like that. It's a beautiful piece. All right, so the next section we have right here is still part of the two preamp section, but this is going to control how heavily uh, or how much distortion we want fed into the distortion section of this plugin. Okay, again, we've got another fine-tuned input drive section. We'll just use this one uh, real quick. I like to keep it at 51, just a little bit, right? But look, look how nasty this can get, right? I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah, it's all the same. Right, it just sounds, ah, oh, it sounds kind of woolly, right? Kind of like, um, you know, it just has the sound to it. But let's just say I wanted more distortion, right? We could do that as well. I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah, it's all the same. Oh, it's all the gain that you do. Right, can you just see how much distortion we can get? Again, we don't want to mix in too much tube drive, especially on the main vocal. It can start to sound crazy. But if you're making songs, you know, like uh, some of the old school X stuff, you know, some really distorted Miami type stuff, you can make use of this. Um, drive these all the way up and see what you get, right? So this is the tube preamp section. This is going to control level and tone. So definitely make use of it. All right, the next section right here is going to be the SLEQ. Okay, this is going to be emulating a classic SSL style equalizer with a twist. Okay, we are actually emulating the old school or one of the versions of the SSL that came out that actually had our pull tech curves. Okay, so really what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be using this to really set the overall character of the vocal okay now as you can see for those who follow the tutorials i've got a, kind of got, got a preset that i like to use um, i'm a big fan of the first preset which is why i made it the first one which is the fries tube console sound and what it really entails is that we, we don't really touch the bass we use a bit of the d mod i'll talk about each knob now we're really ducking that treble and then we're boosting the air and that kind of creates this cool pull text sound that just sounds wonderful on a vocal okay so you know starting from the bass section the bass again is just gonna cut the bass right we can use it if we want a warmer vocal if we want less of a warmer vocal we can cut this I let you. Okay, you say that you 
change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah. It's not right it's kind of like uh it, it's it's easy enough to not mess up right you know we don't want to go like with the full parametric eq and decide where 200 is this is all decided for you okay the dmud section i'm sure for those who follow the videos know exactly what um a parameter this is but again we like to dip it away a little bit right it just adds a nice sound I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone. Right, if we have that at, at the default setting, you can hear suddenly the vocal doesn't sound as professional. But just doing a 6% cut um, on one side, a negative 6% cut, just makes the world's different, right? I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah. It's not Right, and at no point does it sound unnatural. That was the whole point of developing this. I wanted it to sound like a console. Consoles are much more forgiving in how you can kind of, you know, not have a perfect, you know, it's not perfectly in the right place, but it just starts to sound good. You can begin to use your ear more and not really worry about, you know, the value or where it's at. You can just really focus on mixing, okay? Now, the real secret to this plugin is this treble section right here, right? You will think that the treble is, you know, 12k and up but it's not okay it's a certain range in the vocal in the vocal range that you know when you cut it it just sounds beautiful when you boost it it just sounds beautiful okay i like to personally cut it just in the way that my voice sounds but again check out some of the other presets where i'm boosting and uh you know it sounds good so let's just boost this so you can hear i let you okay you say that you change but you never change same text on the phone yeah it's all the same oh it's all again and you do i sound insane and you end up just ignoring you because of the things you do get up on the plane like a Right, can you hear how the vocal gets put into this pocket? Obviously, I did a bit more than I needed to, but you know, when we reduce that treble, the vocal suddenly gets put into this pocket to where the claps and the hi hats and a bit of the instruments are able to kind of sit on top of the vocal without it sounding unnatural. You know, that's the idea with this. So, definitely cut. Uh, if you need a boost, boost a little bit so that you can just get a bit of that air. But really, you know, you're going to get that beautiful treble coming from this air section. Now, this is also kind of inspired a little bit by the Mag EQ. For those who know about the Mag, the air section is, is really the, the, the kind of secret source, right, on vocals. Um, I always found the Mag EQ itself sounded a bit kind of um, uninspiring, right? So I've got this setting right here that's more pull takey. But just listen to this real quick. I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah. It's all the same. Oh, it's all the game that you do. I sound insane. You end up just ignoring you because of the things you do. Get up on a plane, I gotta go. But it just sounds so radio ready, man. I mean, I remember when I was a kid listening to records, the, the vocal always just sounded big, and I wanted to achieve that. And here you go. This EQ is right here, all set up for you. Um, so, yeah, man. Right here, this is the kind of output section and the SFX section. Um, this is the output gain. Okay, so this is going to set the, this is kind of acting as an output fader again. You know, putting a fader there wouldn't uh, have worked so well. But, you know, this is an output fader. This is really just going to set the output level. I personally like to turn it down just one tick all the way over here. Because, you know, the preamp itself is adding a bit of volume in. So you want to kind of compensate for that. You don't want to be hitting the rest of your plugins too hard. So turn on the gain a little bit. Obviously, you can turn it up. Um, it does have an internal limit if I remember correctly, but you know, there you go, right? Um, below we have our SFX section now, you know, for those who've been following the channel for a long time, um, adding flange to a vocal gives it more of an analog character. This is a Seth Fokins technique. Seth Fokins was Futures Mixer. Okay. And, um, basically you add in a little bit of flange and it makes the vocal sound more tape, more analog. So if I turn this all the way up, you can hear what's going on. I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah, it's all the same. Oh, it's all the game that you do, I sound insane. You end up just ignoring you because of the things you do. Right, the vocal kind of sounds more, you know, narrow when we don't have that flange enabled. 16% of flange is going to sound really good. Again, this is a mix of flange, so it's not... 16% wet. This is kind of a cool thing that's going on. And then a little bit of reverb. You wouldn't think that there's a little bit of reverb going on, but this just helps to spread the vocal. You'll really only hear it at extreme settings, but just adding in a little bit of reverb is going to sound amazing. I let you. Okay, you say that you change, but you never change. Same text on the phone, yeah, it's all the same. Right, there you go. A kind of nice, really subtle um, stadium sound, if you want to say it like that. And then we just have the mix knob. Again, this is going to control how much wet and dry um, is going on. But this is a really simple plugin, man. You know, definitely try it out in different places. 
Um, I've seen people add it on effects sends. I've seen people add it on the beat channel, right? Because you've got an EQ section, you can go crazy with it, right? Put it on a parallel section and, and really go crazy on it. Add distortion, have fun with it. This is a analog channel strip and it's for FL Studio. So if you want to use it, definitely check out the link in the description. For those who are using it, shout out to the gang. This is an amazing piece and I uh, hope you enjoy it, man. But nonetheless, let you go enjoy your day. Keep mixing, keep mastering and I'll check out next time. Peace out.